And welcome back to The Post Show, episode number 15. This week we kick things off talking about music and the Architect documentary, uh, which is done about a decade ago and details just the general fuckery of the music business. After that, we get right back into anime and talk about To Your Eternity, episode 14, Grant's review of the Neon Genesis movie, and a little bit on Tokyo Revengers. From there, we talk about Richer, uh, season one and the upcoming season two, and then Last of Us, the series being developed by HBO. Grant's general thoughts on it, since he's pretty familiar with the series. And then he talks about his review of Ori and the Blind Forest and the follow-up game after that. I get into Heist, the docuseries on Netflix, before we finish talking about Star Wars Bad Batch and a little bit of Attack on Titan Season 3 Part 1 right at the end. Thank you guys so much for listening. Enjoy. Oh, hey, Grant. Hey, Dave. How you doing, sir? Oh, not too bad. So, right before we started rolling on the post show, uh, Mm. because we just wrapped up the My Hero Academia podcast. Check it if you haven't listened. Check that shit! Sorry. Slightly salty. Slightly salty. Sorry, that was aggressive. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We were talking about music. Uh, This band, Thrice, that we've both been following for, you know, probably over a decade at this point, um, announced that they're putting out... A, uh, a new record which we're excited for um, but it made me think um, have you ever seen the documentary uh, called Architect that um, Manchild Jared Leto uh, directed? Uh, no I, can't, I cannot say I've ever heard of that. Really? Yeah. Okay so Manchild Jared Leto is most recently known for his faithful or not his faithful his very recent attempt at playing uh the joker in Mm. uh david ayer's suicide squad and recently again in uh zack snyder's extended cut of uh justice league and throwing tantrums that joaquin phoenix got to do his own joker movie but before that he was winning oscars in bad movies and even before that he no i'm fucking with you (laughs) (laughs) i'm just picking on him because i saw him i think like at an award show recently i was like jesus christ uh, weird looking guy but all of that to say he's in a sub uh, par band called uh, 30 seconds to mars and at one point um their record label was suing them for 30 million dollars so the like 10 second history is like they tried to leave their record label on contract mid contract but like they were leaving it uh, you know as according to some state law and the record label was like no you owe us two more albums and then they got sued um and they were currently in studio uh recording their most recent or not their most recent at the time but they're recording like a record that i think they called do or die or i think they called this is war it was like the band not very good sure um but they took the opportunity um to turn that whole like behind the scenes you know, studio documentary into a documentary about the lawsuit. Oh. It is excellent. Really? <laughs> it's very good. It's is like that new or a couple years old now? Several years old. It came out around the time he won his Oscar for, I think, Dallas Buyers Club. Oh. Um, which, you know, that was like the McConaughey movie. Yeah, I saw that one, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was ke- uh, kidding about it being bad. I actually haven't seen it, fun fact. Um, so it being okay, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, it did really, really well, and he got tons of people on the documentary, and he directed it, I think, and uh, yeah, I was being you know a little hard on him earlier, but the documentary is actually really, really good. Hmm. And that's relevant, because we were just talking about this upcoming vinyl release, and we were talking about how Thrice has apparently changed uh, record labels as of uh, late, or semi-recently, for the mm-hmm. release of their last record, so... Yeah, I thought that bared discussion or maybe just mentioning. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, that documentary is really fucking tight. It's I'm, well, I'm glad you brought it up because if there's one thing, you know, it's, you know, you and I, like, we're just voracious music fans. And well, I think we're just voracious, you know, media people. We like things. Anyways, not here nor there. But, like, if there's one blind spot I have, it's just music documentaries. Um like even like like tour ones i guess kind of count you know it's but like behind the scenes stuff i've never i honestly the only one i've watched that has stuck out to me was i think it had to be somewhere from like 2007 to like 2012 like it's a pretty big window but remember you know where parkway drive yeah they did a 
tour DVD. I guess that's just what it was at the time. And mm-hmm. I, I had watched it on YouTube of them touring uh, Indonesia mm. and other like um, East Asian countries. Like I think they went to Malaysia at one point um, in India as well. It was just and then like fast, just a fascinating watch. Like just I remember there was moments that <clears throat> there was people like just walking into the show like they're like oh like an like a band from overseas is playing people just walking into the show and like people are like flipping their merch they don't know like the merch they're flipping outside like <laughs> they, they were saying like from the time they got there in the morning to like the end of the day there was like bootleg shirts of like you know like how did they get all this stuff like in a day's time and all. it hilarious. was pretty yeah it was pretty funny but uh, yeah i know like i said a bit of a blind spot music documentaries well you know like there have been a, a number of them that have gone on Netflix, I want to say in the last three years, but they are, you know, e- extremely well uh, produced and high, uh, high production quality, but they're only for, like, the biggest stars, A-listers, yeah, that are currently touring. Like, uh, my girlfriend watched, like, I think there's one, uh, like, an Ariana Grande one, and it's, okay. like, it's, like, remarkably well put together like you know what i mean like uh i don't know if there are like emmy nominations for that kind of thing but like they're really well done but it's just really not like up my alley Mm. um more marketing than anything yeah you know not 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 to be down on it but like i feel like in some instances like i know there's a lot of talk taylor swift had one yep not too long ago and everyone was like well this is like a a tour advertisement kind of yeah 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 like yeah it, you know, whatever. Um, I ha- I just, you know, in, in the type of music that we s- listen to, there isn't a ton of that. That's why mm-hmm. the architect thing was kind of cool because, you know, I don't know what you would call 30 Seconds to Mars, like what genre you would c- call it, but they were on, you know, the kind of that bleeding edge when we were kids, right? Like yeah. I saw them because they were attached to big tours that I would attend. Sure. So they sounds were... The, were they, no, they weren't Sounds of the Underground. They were... I uh, saw them like, at Taste of Chaos. Taste of Chaos. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. 2008 or 7 mm. and they were fine um, but you know like they were surrounded by bands like Circa Survive and Chiodos you know yeah. at that time so they were like very much in that space so when they did this documentary it was like okay well you're yes it's like A-list or Jared Leto but it's also like banned 30 Seconds to Mars sued for 30 million dollars <laughs> yeah they were definitely they were definitely like post hardcore adjacent yeah, yeah. You know, and, like, they were within that realm, for sure. Yeah, and, like, you know, they just did a good job of sort of exposing modern-day record label contracts. Mm. Um, and this is, like, still very topical now. Like, actually, Taylor Swift and, like, Kanye West and other, like, huge A-listers are and have been in legal battles for years because they don't actually own their own music. Like, Taylor Swift is at the point, I think, this may have changed, don't come after me, fucking Swift Nation, but I think she's at the point where she's been recording her own music, like, re-recording her back catalog, because well, that say, is literally I that easier. Is, I think that is the case, because, like, there's been, I've seen, yeah. anytime, anytime there's, a, like, a Taylor Swift album announcement, yeah. front page of Reddit, like, top post, like, it's always yeah. there, <laughs> you They're know, it's, it's, it's hard to avoid it, like... You get no. I, I have no beef with the popular music like that, but it's it's very hard to avoid, <laughs> you know, when, yeah. when I have this major news like that. So, that stuff is all still like as far as like digital rights management and IP, and you know paying the artist, all of that stuff is still a complete fucking mess. Yeah. And uh, this artist and this takes place before streaming, but like in the midst of like iTunes and stuff. So it's like mm. the music industry is fucking dead. Sure. And the band had sold, you know, 30 Seconds in Mars had sold, like, over 2 million records at this point, and they were in debt with their record label. Like, they hadn't been paid money yet. <laughs> and and then they got sued. So anyway, it's like a whole look at that that whole experience, and they break down, you know, contracts and what and whatnot. Anyway, a very interesting uh, hmm. documentary. It's called Architect, I believe. Check it out. Um, I am going to check haven't. that out. Yeah, that's, it's, that's it's really a good watch. Hmm. Anyway, on to anime pastures yeah <laughs> i was gonna say greener pastures i don't know i don't fucking know um did you catch up to are you caught up with to your eternity yeah boy you know how excited i was to see new episode in my country girl feed and i was like <laughs> ah yes new episode let's do this so, spoilers ahead for episode 14 of to your eternity i believe uh tournament arc tournament arc i was on the subreddit and a lot of people said the same thing you said 
didn't see this shit coming. Like, didn't no. see a tournament arc coming. But uh, I'm not the complaining. The show... No, I, I'm not complaining. The, um... Again, I will say the clunkiest episode yet. Yeah, a little weird. Um, yeah. Like, the, um... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, you go, you go, you go, you go. <laughs> well, it's... It, again, nothing bad. Good episode. Um, it's definitely, like, it requ- it's going to require, like, a rewatch or two. Mm-hmm. Um, but... The like the first battle in the arena where like it comes down and like I think there's at this point there's nine people left mm-hmm. or they think there's eight and then Fushi kind of like waddles his way into the oh, arena. Hey guys. <laughs> yeah, and when the the one dude who takes it upon himself and just I don't like I know Fushi's having that inner monologue of or inner dialogue of like. I was, you know, I was told I shouldn't show my powers. People are going to use it and abuse it and this and that. Like, I, I feel like that's that was going to yeah. come at some point. So, like, I know he was just going to do it anyways. But, A, I was kind of shocked by the arenas. Just everyone, everyone's mood to him, like, shape-shifting like that. Yeah. That was kind of like, well, I feel like that would have gotten a bit of a bigger... Like, people were shocked and people are... They, they kind of cut to him being worshipped a little bit later, but... They really hit home the brutality of the episode. Dude, the, uh, I was, you know, so I agree with you. First of all, I was surprised by this being the moment that he does it publicly. Yeah. I was surprised by the reaction and like the setting it took place in, like all of those things are weird. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe that ends up working out. It worked fine for me, but I was also really surprised at at, like the brutality of it. I was like, man, Jesus, like they're really just decapitating people out here. Yeah, like like the one dude just announcing. I think he just catches like an arrow into the head. <laughs> yeah, just like yeah. And then at one point, I noticed two. I think it's during the um, the one on one battles. They actually have kids holding up shields. Yeah, yeah, that was and, weird. And the kid almost is like a deterrent of like just like killing the announcers. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I wonder if that was like, um, I wonder if that was like a conscious choice by like the manga, the writer, or like the show itself to like hit home that they are merciless but like they are trying to do their best for like you know for people not to get killed mm-hmm. if, if you know what i'm getting at but no i do um also like i know they're really really trying they're gonna have to work a little fucking harder to get us to feel for this new companion um the yeah ring leader girl like yeah I mean, you know, maybe that's, like, the beauty of it. You know, may- I'm saying maybe. Like, maybe we end up caring about this whole new band of characters just as much as we've cared about the last bands of characters. It doesn't seem that way right now. Yeah. I do like, I will make note, that was one thing I noted in this episode that I thought was noteworthy. How many times can I say note in one sentence? Now, <laughs> take note of this observation. Um, but I... I f- Gugu... Or not Gugu. Fushi being like you're not good people like this is a bad place and i don't like you yeah you know because he's like he you know he's not a child anymore he is in a way but like he's had had, experiences he had four good years with his family you know like he learned a lot about what is good and what is wrong okay you people fucking suck and he calls the girl on it. he's like you deceived me you know like you lied to me and uh, this place is a hell hole um i don't want to be your friend i don't want to hang out I am glad they're really not, you know, they're not doing, like, a babe in a new world scenario. Like, mm-hmm. they, like that had happened earlier in the season, obviously, but it was, you know, I'm glad he's not kind of, like, he, you know, that was when he couldn't really communicate and he was being tricked into things yeah. a little bit. This is, like, he does have conscious, like, he is kind of aware of his surroundings. I'm glad that he has, gr- like you said, he has grown. Um, it would have been that- really easy for them to do that, right? Again, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm so glad they didn't. Like, they went the road of, like, no, growth. Like, he's not the same as he was when he met Gugu. He's a yeah. completely different person. Yeah. So I thought that was good. What did you think about the twist at the end? What, the, like, the reveal of the, the woman yeah. from earlier in the season? Yeah. I knew, like, when, earlier in the episode, I knew right away it was her. Mm-hmm. When they tease her. But it's... So she's clearly pulling the strings, obviously. Like, she's the one that got him there. Yes. Um, oh, I meant... Gonna... Sorry, yeah. God, that creepy lady? Ugh. With the licking his face in the middle of the night? What the yeah. hell was that about? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this is... I didn't like that one bit. No, no. But, like, she, like 
Fushi's clearly going to get like the one up on her. Like it's it's one of those things. Yeah. It's the first taste of plot armor. Yeah. In, in the show, um, because he this is the lady he <sighs> smacked because she killed March, right? He smacked yes. her as the bear, and she has the scars. Yeah, and then also um, she goes for a kill, and then I, I forget her name, but the girl who was like March's guardian or friend, the yeah. older girl, when he turns into in the arena, which we didn't, I didn't know you could do, because she's no. still alive. Well, I think or that we know of. She, I'm guessing she's not. Like that, I interpreted that as like I think she must have died in these in these interven in these four years that he hasn't seen her. I'm guessing like. My oh. guess is she was killed by this other purple-haired bitch who licked him in the middle of the night. That's a sentence I never oh, thought I'd say. That's interesting. I didn't but, think of that actually. Yeah, that was the I way thought, I thought. I thought this was like a new, like a reveal, like a new power level upgrade of some sort where he can mm. become people that are still alive. But that would make sense because like he had a connection to her, and if she is dead, you know, yeah, because so. he can turn into, but he can turn into living and dead things. No, because uh, he said... Oh, when... no, he said he can turn into something dead if he wants to. Yeah, like the crab, uh, right? Yeah. Um, but there was like a scene back, you know, mid-season, or mid-relative to where we are now, where he was yeah. talking to Gugu in a tent when Gugu ran away, and he was saying, like, Fushi, do you think you'll become me when I die because we're close? And then he sort of explains, like, yeah, it doesn't seem like I can do it mm. now, but probably... You know, and then Gugu, and yeah. then food, Gugu has this whole thing about, oh, so, like, I'll be alive forever, in a way. Damn. Um, so, I, I don't know. My take on that was that when he turns into this girl at the very end, that means she must have died. I I will hmm. get her name <laughs> next time, because I forget I, yeah, it. Yeah, this is the second, second or third time I've forgotten it. But So, I guess the last thing, I do like, if there's one good thing, a redeeming thing about the character... Again, I forget her name. I think her name starts with a T. The one we're clearly supposed to eventually like. Mm, um, the girl that tricked him onto the island. Yeah, the girl that tricked him onto the island. She, Double she, she and her friend. Yeah, she and her friends kind of give like a summation of like how the world works, and they give like a tour. I thought that mm-hmm. was kind of leading up to the moment of like, I don't want to be your friend. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like they give him like this. You know, it was, it, it was like a like a Saturday cartoon. Like they're ripping around like the island and seeing yeah. this and that. Ragtag team of bandits. Yeah, they and all then have also a story, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. They all have a story, I'm sure. Exactly. And, but then also too, they set up the whole like, you know, like they make the point of yeah, our chief doesn't last for more than two weeks, and people yeah. it was more or less everyone's putting their chips behind you because yeah. like you're immortal. But like you know, he's on. You know, he's never. He's not going to stay. He's going to move on. It also makes you wonder if he is going to end up sticking around. If he does win, because yeah. they kind of tricked us with that with the goo goo arc. So it's. You know, it's this episode. Again, it's not weird. It stumbles a little bit in the arena stuff, but mm-hmm. everything outside of that, I find, is really interesting and setting up some more stuff to come in the next couple episodes. Like curiosities, mm-hmm. more than anything. Yeah. So, I don't know where it's going to go from here, but I'm interested. Yeah. You know, like I figured that chick from earlier would return, and she has, and. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll have to see. I was I was surprised to be honest. Like I I I thought the whole, <clears throat> the whole point of the show is to move forward and the only recurring characters would be the ones that he has the ability to remember mm. and be. So this is the first time where we're see- I guess uh, well, you know Pioran kind of has jumped around from yeah, arc to arc. So man, yeah. I I caught something on uh I don't want to pass this off as my own. It's not a spoiler. Okay. It, it's fan speculation on the mm. subreddit and I don't I don't want to pass it off as my own, though I want you to know that I considered it and took the high road. Okay. Um, But I saw someone say, you know, Pioran's introduction to the whole show is she's freed by March uh, and Fushi in this chase scene where March dies because she's in the back of a wagon being transported by the licky girl because she's a prisoner too. Like, she'd done something on her own. Yeah. And this arc before they were captured, started with PRN saying, you know, we need to get you somewhere to go and train. And, like, where would the perfect place be to do that? It would be, like, on an island where, like, you're constantly forced to fight for your life as an immortal. What if this is all some machination plot by her to just simply get Fushi to grow stronger? 
Like, what huh. if she's the fucking war chief? Or what if she's pulling some kind of string from behind now? I don't we think... haven't seen her. They really hit home that we yes. haven't seen her. She's, uh, yeah, we don't know her state. Like, I'm, you know, expecting to, like, find her, like, fucking Anakin's mother in episode two, like, all fucked up on the brink <laughs> of death. Um... <sighs> Or, you know, like, maybe she's completely fine, and she's like, uh, she, like this is uh, her idea of uh, summer camp for Fushi, and he mm. comes out with a big power upgrade. I, I don't know if that's, you know, I think it's an interesting theory. Like, the tricky part is that we have this antagonist girl who's also there, so it feels like she's also pulling strings. So maybe it's a combination of the two. Maybe that theory has nothing to it, but mm-hmm. I thought it was an interesting one. So, yeah. worth noting. Well, I'm... Like I said, I'm already salivating for the next week's episode. So it's the, this is the problem of week to week, you know, of a yes. show that you are really, really looking forward to. It's yeah. it's uh, quite quite a different story to what else good we're watching. Good problem to have. A good, exactly. It's a good problem to have. What, uh, what else have you been watching? So I finally have been able to finish up um, my journey with uh, Neon Genesis. I finished oh, the movie. The, I finished the movie, yeah. Nice. Um honestly came out with more questions i thought i had a pretty good fucking grip going into it into the movie of how things were going to go and by the end of it i was not just straight up confused again but the i i did it was just one it's one of those shows that you finish you're like huh that's interesting my brain is only going to be able to take my theories so far i need to see what like what other like what other people over the years have said yeah and I, I read a few articles and um I read a very, very interesting article. I believe it was on IGN, of all places. Like, someone put, like, a very thorough, very thorough, like, summary of the the final two episodes of the season and then the movie. And they, whoever, again, whoever the author, I, I wish I had the name in front of me, but it's an article from a couple years ago. Um, how they took that, the, the last two episodes of the season are kind of like a yin ending, and then mm-hmm. the ending of the movie is like the Yang side of it. Interesting. So it's it's very similar. It's uh, man, this sh- like we had talked about this a couple of weeks ago. You have to watch it. And anyone listening, like if you haven't, at least give it a go. If it's not your cup of tea, they definitely in the movie fucking dial up some themes that are a little uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think overall, like just it, it just goes like the budget from like a movie to a show. Like everything is just like full, like full throttle. <laughs> you know, it's the the art style, the just the aesthetic, the music, the imagery, the the violence. You know, it's it's there's no breaks in the whole hour and a half. It's very like go 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 go. And it, quite honestly, one of the most intense things I've ever watched. <laughs> Interesting, um, but I, yeah. I remember at one point I was looking up, uh, and you know, you never know, like with spoilers and whatnot. But like, I, I, I remember so little, sure, like about the few episodes that I watched that I just doubt I'll remember anything I saw. But I do remember looking up poster art at one point for yeah. the series and maybe the movie, and some of the visuals were just beautiful. I was like, yeah. oh my god, some of the art that's coming out of this, uh, this whole project is pretty great. Yeah, it's it, like I said. I'm, I'm. I think I'm. It's definitely a feather in my anime cap, like my history cap. Mm. It's. I feel like as a fan, I'm. I'm glad. I, I'm really glad I watched it, and I do intend, like I said a couple weeks prior, like I do want to rewatch it with, you know, maybe, a, you know, less memory of it and kind of, you know, it's just when you when you do that rewatch, right? Like you, there's the things that you were concrete about, so you can kind of focus on some other things as you go mm-hmm. along. So I, I am excited for that whenever the day comes. But this movie was really good. Um, I think it's a little more bleak <laughs> uh, of an ending versus the last two episodes. Because, like, even going into those last two episodes, I thought that was pretty out there and bleak. But this movie kind of just, like, whoosh, like you know, it, it gives it a run for its money. And it's good, man. It's really good. Very 90s. Like, it's the animation style is just so so 90s and i kind of love that because it's kind of what we grew up with a little bit you know and it's also like you get like the high-end budget of it all too it's it's it was really fun it was a fun watch fuck man we should review cowboy bebop <laughs> we i think we should i think because we got a bit of a lull coming up after my yeah, hero it's just everything you're saying about 90s stuff and the vibe and it makes me think of cowboy um i, I will commit to uh watching the Gen- genesis at some point too but uh 
We should definitely check that out because you've never seen it, right? No, no, I haven't. I, it's uh, again another one of those ones I've always wanted to get around. Oh man, I guarantee Leanna would like it too. It's just like so fucking weird, but good, but so nineties, so nineties. Yeah. Um, cool. So the movie. Yeah, what about you? What? what uh, yeah, movie. Check it out if you haven't. But uh, but uh, yeah, what what have you been up to? Lastly, just on your movie before I move on, have, have you ever seen these videos of people making a tier list out of their anime? Yeah. Uh, no, not videos. I've seen like the Twitter screenshots oh, every yeah, now okay. and then. But even I would be interested in thinking and in, in maybe considering doing one of those in the future, just because we're getting there these days. Because yeah. we're watching so much. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. It would uh, it'd be interesting to just do that one time and like compare our tier lists and see where we agree and disagree. But um, okay. So anyway, uh, this week I did. It was like a weirdly not anime heavy week. I think. Uh, being out of town for the weekend is probably the main thing uh, there. Um, You know, I watched To Your Eternity, My Hero Academia, and Tokyo Revengers. The Tokyo Revengers episode, I, like, was either so non-eventful that I don't remember it, or, uh, or, and, you know, let's be fair, I was so exhausted that I did not ingest it, so... Mm. It's one of those two things. I think they're on episode 15, so I'm going to go back and watch that probably sooner rather than later. I will... I Well, we're going to come back to Tokyo Revengers, so I guess uh, we'll, we'll say no, that. You can jump later. in on that now. If well, want. it's... You know, it, it's... You know, we were, we were talking last week about how some shows might be binge-worthy and some might not be. Mm-hmm. And I was definitely in the camp of... I think Tokyo Revengers does fit the bill of, like, a binge. Mm-hmm. Just because... It's not, there's not so many, like, it's not like a crazy ending, and that's, like, tidying over to the next week. You mm-hmm. know, it would be interesting, like, you know, your perspective on that, but I definitely hit a point where it's clearly the big moment of this, like, little run of episodes. Mm-hmm. And I, again, kind of the same thing. It could have been exhausted or, you know, again, crazy weekend as well, but I kind of just felt like, I feel like there should be more oomph to this. Mm-hmm. And so again, spoilers for anyone listening, but it's it's the moment where uh, Takemichi is like holding down against uh, Ta- essentially like, Takemichi, the the enemy like Tomon gang guys, like the I, I'm blanking on his name, but the original guy, the guy that's there to knife Draken. Oh yeah, okay, I forget and his name, but yeah. So it's essentially just like Takamichi like getting his ass kicked, and then his five boys show up like Akumon, oh, like yeah. you know. So there's that moment, and like again, I haven't watched anything past that. But I felt like this should have, you know, and it's just like kind of like talking to you being like, ah, like I finally won. Mm -hmm. And I actually thought he killed that guy. Mm. So, again, you know, don't, if that is the case, like, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not looking for you to spoil, but it's, I feel like if he had killed him looking back, be like, oh, that kind of fucks up this whole timeline thing, potentially, you know, it's. Yeah. So, So, yeah. Here's what I'll say. It's not really spoilery at all. Mm -hmm. It's an observation that I've had that I've thought about uh, just the way the show is moving. Is that, you know, there's a lot of drama and a lot of uh, conflict in the past. But the show is, I think, at its best when it's in the future. Which is, of course, or in the present, rather. um, Which, of course, is sparingly. Sure. Um, But I think the best part of the show, and it comes in doses is when Takemichi has to go backwards and forwards through time and determine what his actions did, Mm. right? So it's not a spoiler to tell you, just him being there and being cognizant about Draken potentially being murdered, that has already changed the timeline, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so what will him and his five boys, like, defending Draken in this, like, moment of need, what does that change? And sure. then watching how the present timeline adapts or doesn't or changes or doesn't is, like, probably the best part of the show. And Ooh. because... Because I am close to catching up to you. I'm, I'm probably only, like, three or four yeah. episodes behind. So, okay. And because that happens sparingly, like, once every, what, five, six, seven episodes? Yeah. Um, it might be better as a binge because you get to the reward faster, right? Sure. It's almost like you got to spend four or five episodes in the past um, and remind yourself that, like, this is the show, but also not mm. um, to get, like, a payoff in the future. It's kind of tricky. That might 
that might be a good argument for why it's a better binge. Sure. So hmm. I don't know. Well, like I said, thankfully, like I do have some episodes more to watch there, so like I'll I'll be getting to that shortly, kind of thing. But yeah. Uh, yeah, otherwise, I'm still like I'm still really liking the show, but I do. It's not quite long in the tooth yet, but I could see this show having that problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. You know. I'm you know I'm big on endings. I think we both are. I you know I'll be curious to see. Um, how far or how they wrap up the season and that will probably determine whether I tune in next time but you know so far I'm having a good time it's just not yeah. like mind blowing you know it's sure. going up against it's one day removed from To Your Eternity so mm. you know that kind of hangs over it it's a bit of a shadow um, so I wanted to ask you about two random things they're like kind of entertainment newsy but I, it struck me that I've I don't know if we've ever talked about uh, The Witcher the series with Henry 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 Cavill on Netflix. Yeah, I think we talked about it a couple of weeks ago or Whoops. a while back. Did we? Did we? Fuck. A <laughs> really? little bit. Uh, yeah, <laughs> fleetingly. I uh, I was just curious. Did you watch the trailer? No, no. For season two. No. Okay. Well, they put out a season two trailer, and it kind of made me think about like, oh right, like season one. Did I like that? And I was mm. kind of like. I don't know, and uh, well, what did you think? Just like a quick yay or nay? Were you big on it or? I I had to stop watching. I couldn't do it. Oh fuck! Really? Yeah, I really oh, couldn't. No. Um, that's so sad. Yeah, it's and that's the thing too. Like I've, we had this conversation. I think we were having a conversation about uh, source material, and right. the, witch, the Witcher was brought up. And you read the books. I, I've read, yeah, major, uh, almost all the book. I think I'm I'm still one away from being finished. But um, the problem I had with the show this is gonna sound so this is gonna sound so nitpicky. I just thought it looked cheap. Like even though like it had all this money in the world thrown at it, it just somehow looked really cheap. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, you know, like I'm not a. Sn- I, it's hard to talk about this Witcher show without coming off like a bit of a snob. No, um, man. It's, hey, we're, this it's, is what the post show is for. Yeah, it's upsetting it, people. Yeah, so the the source material, like, it's not like it's so vastly different, but it's just such little things. Like, I think the big point too is like the internet. I know there's a lot of like a vocal minority complaining about, oh, this character is not black. Like, what you know, like, why do they like that shit does not fucking matter. But like the kind of the lore stuff they kind of played around with, I found to be a little not off-putting is just like but it was it felt like they were changing stuff that if they had just kind of left it actually would have fit better in the overall story right and it was you know it's hard to compare like without getting you know i don't want to get like into the nitty-gritty of like content wise specifically Mm -hmm. and stuff like this but it's it was just like why like why do you have to change it but then there's like stellar episodes like you know the the first episode like the butcher blobican episode is like straight out of the book very well done and then I remember the pilot being very strong, you know, and I, I remember going into the pilot saying like, fucking a let's go like this looks awesome. And then it kind of just once they started introducing all like the the sorceress stuff that I just is like, oh, my God, like, come I, on. Yeah, I remember one of the biggest problems and being like so shocked that they missed this. Cause, so, I, you know, uh, for reference, I haven't finished the game. I haven't played any of the book or read any of the books. But, you know, I do have, like, that affinity for a lot of things that that have been adapted. And then when you're so close to the source material and you see it adapted, you're like, Mm -hmm. it's it's very hard to please me in that sense. And a lot of people, right? Uh, Because a lot of the times it's not a direct adaptation and you require change to move from one medium to another. We've talked about that. However, my problem has with it had nothing to do with that. Mm. It was like, I remember, like, talking to, because it was, like, really popular, right? It yeah. was trending when it came out. And it was, like, greenlit for season two, like, before it came out or some shit. It was ridiculous. Um, but I remember talking to people and seeing online, and people were genuinely confused and did not know that they were hopping through timelines. And it yeah. didn't click for, like, half the fucking audience until, like, the second half of the season. Yeah. And that's not, like, a artsy, we tricked you choice. That's, like we're working with a mechanic, but people didn't know we're working with a mechanic. Like, <laughs> like they just like, you know, all they had to do is like throw like a year on the screen in between scenes. And they would have like, it just seemed like such a hilarious directorial slash editing mistake. It was like, you have 
you know, like, like they just they spent so much money in some areas, and like I get what you mean about it looking cheap in others, but it was like they really went for it. Like they tried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And to trip over something so silly, yeah. it was just uh, so fucking weird. Um, I thought Cavill was great throughout. Yeah. Oh, from what I saw of him, he was he was tremendous, and it, it really it really goes a long way when you know like he's one of us man like he's a fucking oh nerd. he's a dork big, and it's big time it, dork and it's good to see that and like it um like there was a video i don't know where i saw this actually but he did a, an interview recently where he's in the interview and there's like a chandelier above him or like on the screen behind him, and like he straight up like interrupts the interview and was like that looks like a such and such from and the guy's like i don't know what you're talking about and he's like from warhammer 40k that, <laughs> and he's like that looks like a like a dread citadel or something like that and then like he kind of just goes into like a warhammer talk for a few seconds and he's like okay all right i guess back to what we were like you know press yeah. tour or whatever and i'm <laughs> i saw it was just like a couple days ago i saw this i saw on but, his uh, instagram he did like a long-term sped up video of him building his own pc to game on and there's yes. like this anecdote that he would share on like late night talk shows like he missed Zack snyder's call and he knew it was Zack Snyder calling about casting him as Superman because he was in a WoW raid at the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, like, you don't know. You know, you never know. That could be complete bullshit. But, like, it doesn't really ring inauthentic. Like, it it like it really seems like he's a fucking dork, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's funny. You know, it's, it's good to see him uh, in, in that environment. Anyway, so season two is coming. I think I'm going to watch only because, you know, it got so much juice and it was so big, I want to see how they follow up. Like, I want to see what changes, if anything. So, again, I, I do believe I'm going to try and power through the first season, it, kind of for, like, the similar reasons as you. Is I, I do want to see if there is... Because there, there was a lot of complaints on the internet, not just about, like... You know, there was various things, like, you know, the, the time skipping or the jumps and all that, but... Um, I would like to see, like, where the improvements are made. Because, mm-hmm. like, from what... They've been very forward about, you know, they they want to they want to fix what like they felt like they got wrong Mm -hmm. and not a lot of shows are like you know showrunners and you know like even like on the corporate level are very forward about that stuff and i feel like since the first season came up almost any show that i can think of they've been very like hey yeah there's some things we can fix and we're gonna we're gonna try and do that you know it's yeah and yeah the way they've teased out another big thing too is i remember like the nilf guardian armor was just silly looking (laughs) and then they've recently kind of like updated like an updated version of of the uh, the armor and all that and i thought that I was like well that looks a little more you know mid fantasy level <laughs> you know like they were really going they were had some pretty out there stuff in that first season yeah that's but, interesting uh, yeah i you know without uh carrying a lot of that source material i thought it was like genuinely good not blow your head off amazing but had like i said some weirdly obvious problems that just seemed like blatant oversights but like yeah, I thought it was you know I thought it was good. I'm interested to see season two, so yeah. stay tuned for that. Um, I want the second one is also right up your alley, and it's more of a question uh, that I have for you because I saw some headlines about it today, and that is uh, HBO is developing an adaptation of The Last of Us. Yeah, and some numbers came out today about <laughs> it's on track to be as expensive if not more than Game of Thrones was per episode. Some they're in eight figures, so over 10 million dollars per episode. Um for it looks like 10 episodes. I don't know if it's going to be more than one season or not. It's got our boy Pedro Pascal. Yeah. Um who has worked with uh, HBO uh in the past. Um so what what are your thoughts on the fact that they're doing this? Are you excited? Do you have trepidation? Just where are you at as a fan of that uh, <sighs> series? And for the listener's reference, I've never played any of those games. I've only heard Grant talk about and the internet talk about them. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't like it's it's like it's HBO and I that don't, matters. So, this isn't FX, right, or the CW? Yeah, well, well, you know what? Like FX puts out some like really good stuff. So like I would CW would be a different thing, but if but even FX like the scope would have to be so massive. Mm-hmm. Like it would be such a huge undertaking. Um, so I have no trepidation, but like from day one, they've been talking about making this into a show since the first game came out and I've just not been about it. Mm. Like there is just some like, and it's not like a too sacred thing. It's not that, but I genuinely believe and fuck the internet has got some pretty hot and silly takes on, on the second game. 
Um, yeah, I've seen a lot about that. Which, like, fucking... I, I won't hear anything. I think it's fucking stupid. Like, it's a great story through and through. Like, is what it is. Um, but, like, the beauty of gaming and 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 sony specifically and i do think microsoft is trying to catch up in this like their first part sony's first party games like they are very well at telling an emotional story and then you have the bonus feature of it being an interactive story like you are a part of the story like you are feeling the stakes you're involved in the stakes you know you're not making the decisions but you're along for the ride but like you're you're engaged like you're playing the fucking game and i honestly don't know if the show can recreate that because there were some high highs and there's some low lows in these games. So I think I'm like, I'm going to watch it and I'm sure it's going to be great. I hope they just, I wish they weren't re- like doing like Joel and Ellie, like the main two characters of the first game. I wish they were not trying to recreate what the game was. I wish they would just tell like a story in that world, you know, mm. like have like fun little references or da da da, like you know. So like do you just... think it's set to be basically the first game just adapted to the screen? They've more or less said it's going to be like a uh, like I think it's like like sixty five percent the main strokes of the game, okay, and then the rest is going to be like a new narrative. So it's not necessarily going to end the same way by the end, and they're going to want this to last forever. So like. You know, I'm not going to assume it's going to be along the same timeline as the whole first game, you know. Um, sure. But I... It's, Does Pedro yeah. Pascal play Joel? Is that, like, yeah. the main character? Yeah, okay. The, yeah, he's, so he's playing the main character. And then the girl, she was she was the... In Game of Thrones, she was, like, the the bear princess. Is she a Mormont? Oh, uh, the young girl? Lyanna yeah. Mormont? The, yeah. She, the young, young girl? Yeah, she's playing Ellie. Oh, well, I mean, I remember she stole quite a few scenes in Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah she's yeah. probably a little bit older now, so maybe... Yeah. That's an... In- yeah, that's a cool pairing. Both so of those it, two people were on Game of Thrones. That's funny. Oh, oh yeah, true. He, yeah, he was the Viper. Um, but, you know, so it's like I said, like, I'm not... I just... I just wish they had left it alone. But, like, sure. a lot of the... Like, Neil Druckmann, who's... I think he was he's the head of naughty dog who makes these games is Mm -hmm. like very involved in this. Like, I think he was like a TV writer or he was involved in the movie industry prior to him making games, I believe. So like, this is something he kind of knows, but I don't know. I'm not, I read that they also got the same composer or sound design guy from the uh, games to come to the movie or the show, which apparently is a big deal as well. People are going to be losing their shit over, over uh, that soundtrack for sure. Which is, and like I said, so they're like, you know, like, I'm excited for it, but it's just, like, in the back of my mind, is like, they couldn't have just left it alone. You know, of course it's, not, it's, no. And you it's, know, everything no. has to be part of a universe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of a franchise or a, cin- a cinematic experience of, uh, of some kind. Like, I remember, you know, uh, A Quiet Place with, uh, what was that, Emily, Emily Blunt and John, yeah. what the hell is his name? John Krasinski. Krasinski. And they, you know, spoiler alert for the first one, they fucking kill him at the end. I was like, oh, what a neat, like, wrap it in a bow, kill the dad, like, fresh take on a horror movie. And they're like, nah, we don't need the fucking dad. Let's do another one. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, you can't just, no one can leave anything alone. Like, if it's original, no. and it's, if it's original, it's really just an excuse to have IP. And when you have IP, there's opportunity for franchising. Yeah. Do not close the fucking door. You know what I mean? And even if you do, we'll just adapt it to a new medium. <laughs> I, and yeah, I don't know. Like, if anyone hasn't played the game, and Dave, like, I actually think you would enjoy these. Like, the it's a very good take on the whole. It's because I don't. I hate. I hate zombie stuff. Like, I remember, yeah. like when you and I were in high school, we were in like the fucking middle eye of the storm. Yeah, uh, everything had zombies. It was like it's well, zombies and bacon. Uh, you they, know, like every restaurant you went to was bacon themed. This and every movie that was coming out, that, every game, it was I, all I, zombie shit. I think The Walking Dead has done, ironically, so much good and so much damage to the stories that can be told. No, I think I think The Walking Dead is what killed. <laughs> yeah, because like this was all prior to Walking Dead. Because like Walking Dead came out when we were in college. Oh fuck! Okay. You know, or like at least the very maybe tail into high school. But like anyway, so The Last of Us was a nice. It, it, it reminds me of 28 Days Later. Like, it's a zombie movie, but it's sure. not. Like, people argue that it isn't. Um, if you haven't seen that, I mean, fucking watch 28 Days Later. That yeah. is a good movie. But, um, I don't know. It's a great game, great story, emotional stories, raw and visceral and brutal. And just, 
you know, it's, I don't know, it, the show is going to be great. I'm sure of it. Pedro Pascal is a very, very competent actor. So I think he's going to put in he's a nice emotion. He's talented. He's going to put a very emotional performance in. So, hmm. Well, that should be interesting. I will, I will definitely watch it just based off of, uh, you know, just everything I've heard about the story. So I guess yeah. we'll have to see. Mm-hmm. What about you, sir? What have you been watching? Well, so we'll take a quick little watch break. Um, so I beat, I think last week or the week before, I was talking about Ori and the Blind Forest. Yes. Um, it kind of just hooked me in. It was just a nice, it was kind of like a nice little uh, gaming vacation, you know, moving away into the indie area. Got beat it, got through it, and I jumped right into the second one. What is it? Something of Will of the Wisps? Will of the Wisps. Something and uh, honestly, I, I cannot think of a game that just took everything that was perfect about the first one mm-hmm. and just just took that and moved forward it didn't try to revolutionize all this extra stuff didn't try to add like mm. you know like that's a that's a big problem with gaming you know especially like in the the AAA market like where you know something works in the first game and then they have to add this and they have to add that and da, da, da. like they just they continue to make it better it's a like a, a couple of years difference between when they came out visually it's actually shocking how much better it looks than the first one, which is sort of to say like a lot. The argument of iteration over like complete revolution. Yes, like they just took what was what worked and added on to it instead of yeah. just trying to reinvent the wheel. And and you know they take like little things like you know like there's side quests in it now and like mm. there's you have the ability to because there was the only way you could attack in the first game is if like you would charge up like essentially like a fireball. And you have to do everything at range. Like this, you know, they have like, it's like skills and you can equip charms mm-hmm. that like add different effects to your character. It's very like Hollow Knight, um, which I think I've talked about. It's very similar, but not as hard. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, no, I, I, I don't want to get into it. Like there's boss fights in this now. The Very cinematic, like, you know, uh, you're trying to evade like bigger creatures in the world. Like it's just, the they've introduced so much lore into mm-hmm. this one. I I was ten minutes into this new game. I was like, "Holy fuck, this is gonna be this is gonna get better and better and better." I hope they make another one. <laughs> like I and I, I would be surprised if they didn't. But uh, like I said, I'm still early days into it. I beat the first two bosses, and I think there's lots and lots of game left. Like I think the length of it is almost doubled. Is the vibe I'm getting interesting? And yeah, it, it's less about. Um, and, like, it's just more, like, awesome platforming. Like, you know, like, the mistakes you're making are you. It's not because, like, you're relying on all these, like, shitty little things around you. And, like, the hitboxes are accurate and clear and concise. And you can kind of map your abilities around. It's just, it's, oh, it's I, I can't say more good things about the game. I, I won't get on it for too much longer. But uh, it's, um if you have an Xbox, I think you can play it on Xbox One. I might be wrong. Actually. I think you can. I think it's on one, I, or at least I, the original is. Or yeah, Forest is. It, it, if you have an Xbox system, or if you have a Nintendo Switch, they're on those as well. Um, oh, really? Yeah, Microsoft did a deal with Nintendo to bring them onto the Switch, and apparently, they're like, there's some of the most competent, competent um, ports from Xbox to, or like, to it, like not necessarily an Xbox, but like to a Nintendo system. Um, I, I guess like it would be good on a Switch. Yeah, yeah, very handheld would be nice, but no, it's really, really. I I highly recommend them. Interesting. For sure. Yeah. Cool. Ori and the Blind Forest. Maybe I'll check that one out. I've been looking for a game. I've got. I get that yearly itch. I think you would. I honestly, Dave. I think it would be a dead ringer for you. Interesting. Yeah. I looked at some screenshots. It looks artsy. Yes. Very pretty game. Yeah. Um, a quick one. I binged just on my, like being kind of half awake, half conscious, just sort of like turn the TV on, kind of. Uh, you know, it's, that's a vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I watched um, this Netflix series that came out, I think, recently. 2021, anyway. And it's called Heist. Okay. Um, the reason why it's good is... I kind of have to tell you why these things can sometimes be bad. It's a docu-series. Okay. And I don't know if you heard this uh, very random, quick side tangent about the college admission scandal in the US. They did a docu or they did a documentary about it on Netflix. It might be a docu series. Um, just about how incredibly competitive it was or is to get into Ivy League Ivy League schools in the United States and the amount of parents that were bribing or uh, school admission officials to okay. get in. Yeah. You know, paying hundreds of thousands of dollars on top of tuition to try and get their kids admitted. 
it was a really interesting story when it broke. And of course, they came out with a documentary on it. And I was like, fuck mm. yeah, I'm watching the shit out of this. And I turned it off 10 minutes in oh. because they made the choice to reshoot the whole thing as like a dramatization. <laughs> like they had pieces of a good documentary of like, you know, like actual breaking news, like showing the reports coming out, showing some of the real people. And then they put at the bottom of the screen, recreation by paid actors. And like, you just get a scene out of a not movie. <laughs> Like, what in the actual fuck are you doing? So, like, what a great way to butcher a good story. Anyway, like, I and, you know, it, it, believe me, like, it was not just me. I'm not being pretentious. It's just, like, I think everybody at this point has seen a good fucking documentary. And that's not yeah. what they do. <laughs> so, you know, it took me out of it. It took the people I was watching it with out of it. Um, so, with that in mind... Heist uh, is a docu-series uh, of six episodes, and it does two episodes apiece on a heist. Uh, and I like heists. So yeah. it uh, has just enough real stuff and just enough uh, dramatization stuff, but never crosses the line of being, like, stupid, um, that it's uh, interesting. And, you know, like, two episodes each is, like, a really appropriate amount of time to give you closure on every heist. Mm. Uh, and they're all recent too, which is like kind of fucking cool. Like mm. one is like a straight up fucking uh, Vegas robbery. One is robbing a uh, a uh, bourbon distillery. Um, oh, and they're all you know American, uh, you know '90s and early 2000s cases. That so mm. you know them being new kind of make them fun that way. Uh, so yeah, I, I at one one's an airport he- heist for Christ's sake, like. Ooh. Uh, Good fellas. I, yeah, dude. Uh, really, really interesting. You know, it's not like blow your mind, but it was like, I was like, man, this was like a really good decision to hmm. get into something like this for, for today. So heist on Netflix, if you're into that kind of thing. There is something mystical about the, like the era of, um, you know, like murder mystery docs, you know, like, like there was like the staircase and even like tiger king to a certain extent like it just netflix has just really captured like a whole era of an audience and like these docu shows that they put out you know there's yeah there's the one fuck what was the one the and i watched i'm blanking on the name it was a show from the eight or the like the the 90s i believe was it catch a murderer oh yeah 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 uh how to catch a murderer? No, no, it's the one where like each episode, it's it's they talk about like a certain case, and essentially it's like cold case files, okay, kind of thing. I'm blank on the name. I'm I'm sure uh, I'm sure Leanna's gonna she's probably listening to this right now, and she's gonna be uh, yeah yelling the name out. But uh, yeah, no, I just I Netflix just really just nailed that. They they saw their open. I think when Blackfish kind of kicked it all off. I mm-hmm. feel like couple years ago they've got but, so uh, many of those like yeah. uh night stalker the serpent i think maybe one of those isn't real or is real but anyway uh yeah they've got tons of those like that whole true crime area really exploded mm-hmm. uh maybe potential for me anyway uh in a, in a in a way that it is like kind of oversaturated now um because there's just so much it's kind of overwhelming yeah but uh heists are fun you know yeah i like to yeah. steal things for, for the sure. idea of stealing things rather anyway um that's probably it for me this week what about you um one little thing i just want to touch back in with uh, the bad batch um oh, yes we, we had talked a couple weeks ago it's not that i you know we weren't enjoying it it was just at that point even after like five or six episodes in we weren't really sure where it was going mm-hmm. you know it was still kind of you would feel like at that point you would have a good idea. You know, it, there was like kind of like the obvious one right in front of you, but they weren't really even like now, like the obvious, the obvious plot point is kind of not like they've kind of snuck it in here and there. Like they're mm-hmm. trying to evade the empire because they have like this younger, this Omega character. I almost said Omega, <laughs> uh, but uh, Omega, um, you know, like they've kind of done that, but they've really kind of circled back because there's like one of the original members. Obviously, sorry, spoilers to anyone listening. Um, so I'll give you a second to fast three, two, forward one, or whatnot. Spoilers. Three, two, one, spoilers. Um, so they've they're kind of circling back. One of the members of the Bad Batch still is like working with the Empire, and he doesn't have his chip in, or he still has his chip in his head. Mm-hmm. Like the uh, the one that you know initiates Order sixty six and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
so they've kind of set up like it's about to be like a hunting like a revenge story because like there was one of the probably one of the most tremendous episodes of like star wars animation that i've seen was like them like evading him when he got the jump on them sure and you know he's looking to get some revenge back on his on his former brothers and all that so it's they're really setting up the stakes and they've done a really cool job of because like you know uh dave filoni was big in like the rebels show that was his baby Mm -hmm. and this season they've done a lot of setting up pieces what is to become the rebellion Mm -hmm. and it's like the these members like the bad batch like you know uh clone troop 99 they are surprisingly pivotal (laughs) to the rebellion being a thing without like directly being involved in it so it's kind of like an interesting like they're always like they're always around for like major rebellion moments of like early days so it's it's kind of a it's like this has become a bit of a playground for the characters for them to like bring characters back from this era and that era and it's uh i don't know it's it's a lot it's it's always been fun but the show is really starting to pick up its steam and i think i know that i feel like the general narrative direction is starting to pave its way a little bit more nice and uh i'm yeah i how many episodes is bad batch into at this point I think we're twelve. Okay, so it's I, moving right along. And that's the thing. I don't. I don't know how many more there are. So, um, but I have a suspicion because they opened up the season with a huge bang, like an hour and a half long episode. Damn, um, so that. I'm wondering if they're going to do an equally as epic season Finale. closer. I hope they do, um, because probably the one of the best episodes, probably in the top three of the season so far, was that first one. It was just balls to the walls, like really really good star wars content that's pretty killer but uh but yeah bad i've batch. heard lots about bad batch and that is solid i actually think i was thinking about this this would probably be a good spot for you to jump in because it does it it, it almost works you could either watch rebels or this first so if you watch rebels you kind of you're in the rebellion like they're like the early days of the rebellion and you're meeting all these characters and regulars of the sh- like the current universe like popular characters in the mm-hmm. universe and then in the Bad Batch, or you could do the Bad Batch where it's like, you know, it's kind of the in-between Rebels and Clone Wars. And, you know, like you're going to meet these characters, you're meeting these characters that, depending on which way you watch it, you're like, oh, that's that person, they're in this. Or like, oh, that's someone from Rebels. And, you know, it's it's kind of cool that way. So it's, they, I think they might have had it in mind of anyone could jump in at this point and use this as the way to start watching the other animated shows. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've built a hell of a universe. Like the anime universe yeah. at this point, or animated series universe. They've definitely done a better job. Like, I think in retrospect, I, I bet even if you ask, like, even if you go on their website, they have the actual watch order for Clone Wars. So you can tell, I think they've they've learned their lesson of like the way they kind oh, of put things so they're out. Like, oh, okay. So they're like fully aware. <laughs> I, oh yeah. It's, this is a Star Wars, like official, this is the watch order, our yeah. bad. <laughs> You know? oh, I, I yeah. was always under the impression that like the watch order was like this thing you had to like fucking dig up like that no. like, big time fans were like I no, think no, at no, one no. time yeah. at one time I remember years ago when I had first tried to watch the Clone Wars um, I had to find it was like a um, it was like a like a fan page website it, like you know it was just you remember like GeoCities or whatever like, yep. back in the day yep. it was like yep. and you know, and then when Leanne and I had started watching over and I was doing the research on it, um, the, uh, yeah, it, it was like right on the Star Wars website and they're like, we're like, here's the official list. And it's like, that says something, you know? Yeah, it does. It's, uh, you know, at least a little bit of, uh, self-awareness though. Like there's just so much yeah. goddamn content at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Bad batch. Bad batch. Right. That's, is that it for you this week? No, well, we had we had a pretty lazy Sunday, and we ripped through um, Attack on Titan season two Jesus. and season and season three part one. Holy f- fuck! <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Sorry, Sunday, Sunday, and Monday, but I was still feeling like the po- like the my second similar to you, my um, my second vaccine symptoms were just outrageous, yeah. and I you know just hurting. I had felt like. I- we we literally made like a couch fort like we put the two couches together and we just like like it felt like we were sitting in a capsule and we just like ripped through attack on titan 
and uh but yeah no Leanna's loving it it's so and you know I'm just having so much fun um just rewatching it it's like you said like all the things in season yeah. two and season three that they trickle along the way it's big time uh, yeah so it's a lot of fun um I, I had a random note about that about Attack on Titan you just brought it up so I just want to bring it up really quickly yeah um, and like maybe spoilers for Leanna, maybe turn this off if you want for season four, I'll leave it up to you. I picked this up in season three. Um, in season three, part one, when Aaron is in the basement, uh, you know, in, in that crystal basement, he's about to be eaten by yeah. Historia. Yeah. One thing we never got closure on, like they haven't, you know, painted it for the audience perfectly but i'm curious is aaron eats a bottle called armor holy fuck it is so fucking weird you said that because that is the thing that stuck out to me i was like what what was that always there (laughs) so it was and you know like he is it just my thought is is it spinal fluid from reiner's titan like but reiner's titan doesn't have the ability to make armor unless he does and hasn't shown us he just is armored i think annie is the only other one that has hardening no actually in season four and in uh and season three part two zeke shows the ability to harden as well hmm so what the fuck is that about you're right annie can so like i remember they make note like he's impressive because he's mastered the ability to harden so quickly but yeah. like, is that like, you know, we know because of the end of season three and the season four stuff, we know the mechanics of how the Titans work, how they are passed down, their unique yeah. abilities. No one has touched on like, why is there a vial with armor on it? Like, yeah. is that just a bonus? Of it? Like that, that is the only thing that doesn't really fit. Where I does agree. that come from? I agree. We were watching that. And I had to like pause and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And yeah. even Leanna was like... <laughs> why was there just a bottle there <laughs> like you know yeah. rod but rod reese like the fan that could have been passed down from, like from when they originally came over yeah but wh- from where though right like is it just armored titan spinal fluid and if you already have a titan and you ingest it you get some bonus abilities like it's one of those things you got to be fucking you got to be gentle on the internet you can't be looking, oh, yeah. into, you can't can't be look looking into bottles of <laughs> armor fluid. You know? <laughs> like, I, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I, I looked up one. I had one other thing, and it's also season three, part one, maybe two. So careful if anyone listening. Uh, when they learn, I'm pretty sure it's part one. Um, you know, they is it Commander Sadie's? They connect the dots that Aaron's commander from season one is the guy that found Aaron's father stumbling out around the walls. Remember that? Uh, I think that's part two. Oh, really? Wait. Because uh... we find out that this guy is a commander of the scouts and like that regiment. Or he's like the new recruit commander. He gives Aaron a really hard time. But then Aaron puts the dots together. They go question him. And they realize that this guy like was in love with Aaron's mother and like didn't like Aaron's father and he's the one who found Grisha outside the walls and it's this like that's definitely part two we haven't seen that yet really eh? okay I thought it was like right at the end of part one but anyway so on that you're gonna see this and um just keep an eye out because you know we've talked about if you remember when we were covering Attack on Titan season four one thing they did really, really effectively is they would lift the same lines of dialogue out from past seasons and then put mm. them in new characters' mouths, yeah. Um, but under a different context and stuff. Dude, this one's pretty good. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a twist at the end of season three, part two, where the owl mm. is is talking about future memories. And yeah. he says to uh, Grisha, in order to save Mikasa and Armin and everyone else, right? Yeah. And at the t- that's the twist at the time because we he, those people aren't even alive yet, or if they, you know what I mean? Like he, we haven't met them yet in that timeline. When Aaron sees the flashback of his father giving him Aaron the Titan injection, his dad says the same fucking words. Yes, I do remember him saying 
saying that, yeah. Like, Aaron, you gotta, you have to harness this power in order to save Armin and Mikasa and everyone else. Kind of funny. <sighs> Another fucking Isayama. It's so funny. Bitch. It's so funny. Like, we're watching and Leanna's like, I don't know if I'm ready to get hurt in season four part two and i'm like we're all about to get her <laughs> oh it's <laughs> like, gonna be so bad it's gonna be bad but yeah no for that's uh that's it for me man that's uh cool homie yeah light week light week boy okay y'all uh thank you guys so much for listening this has been the post show we do this every friday and if you're not already aware we also cover my hero academia season five which drops usually on wednesdays so check that out support the show like comment subscribe do the relevant social media thing on the relevant social media platform Thank you for listening. See you next week. Bye, guys. Cheers.